Big Ten action this weekend between number seven Penn State and Illinois. To preview this game, let's welcome Tyler Donahue of Lions 24-7 and Jeremy Werner of Illini in choir. The Nittany Lions carrying an impressive streak into Champaign this weekend. Nine straight games scoring at least 30 points. That's the best in the FBS. So how does Illinois challenge in this Big Ten opener? Well, let's talk about it. And we'll start with the former five-star recruit, the top quarterback in the 2022 class, Drew Aller. Tyler, he's completed 78% of his passes for 9.6 yards per attempt. How have you seen him progress this year? Well, the remarkable thing is that he's put together these numbers, 500-plus passing yards, four touchdowns, and, and that great completion percentage without airing it out much. Only one completion has traveled more than 20 yards downfield through the air, and that happened to be a 72-yard touchdown reception for Keandre Lambert-Smith on the first possession of the season opener. Drew Aller has been elite in carving it up from the intermediate to short range with the passing. You see on the video there his ability to manipulate the pocket, create opportunities for himself to step up, go lateral, and when you're doing that at six foot five. 240 plus pounds that presents a lot of problems not only is he able to evade pressure in the pocket we saw that yes last year as a freshman too but he keeps his eyes downfield working through his progression so the longer that he buys time the more dangerous he is because he's got the kind of arm talent that can hit any blade of grass in the football field and he's got a receiver group that can pl go play fetch i think we're all looking for here is drew aller in his first big 10 start his first road start does offensive coordinator mike yurchich take the top off this offense a little bit and can we see that five-star talent extend down the field a bit more so you have the young quarterback with the pedigree on the other side we have luke altmeyer coming to illinois as the number 10 quarterback in the transfer portal that's according to our 24 7 sports rankings uh jeremy he's looking for a little bit of career resurgence here what's been his impact as a transfer He's been the brightest spot of the Illinois football season through two games. We knew he was talented. He was a former four-star prospect, as you said, a top 10 transfer. But I would argue he's made as big of an impact as any transfer into the Big Ten so far this season. And he's done it with an arm that has been accurate. He's thrown three interceptions, but one of those was not on him. We expected some growing pains in the decision-making category because he doesn't have a lot of experience. But he's been a dynamic playmaker. He runs the RPO incredibly well for Illinois. Uh, it was a really strong passer, great touch on down the field throws. What is most impressed is his ability to run. Barry Lonnie Jr., the offensive coordinator, was excited about Luke Altmaier as an athlete, thought he could give Illinois a dynamic that Tommy DeVito didn't quite have last year, and that has proven to be the case. He is the Illinois leading rusher through two games, which was not the expectation, but given an offense that might not have the athletes of some other Big Ten teams on the perimeter, his running ability has added a lot both in the red zone and as a big play threat that can move the chains. Obviously, Altmaier's success kind of comes with the success of the offensive line, and it's been kind of a tough ride through the first two games, allowing six sacks, 14 quarterback pressures against Kansas. Brett Bielema kind of hinted at changes could be coming to the line. So, Jeremy, what do you expect from this offense against a tough Penn State defense? Yeah, Illinois' offense has not gotten off to good starts. They have played better in the second half, but they have struggled to get the run game going early enough in games, and they want to be physical. They want to be tough, smart, and dependable, and the reason they were able to upset Penn State two years ago in Happy Valley was they had 357 rushing yards against Penn State, uh, and they just owned the trenches, put seven offensive linemen on the line of scrimmage, that barge formation that got a lot of memes, uh, but they were just the more physical football team against Penn State. Penn State has improved dramatically on the defense defensive line, but still Illinois needs to be better up front. They showed signs uh, in the run game against Kansas. They just got behind by so much that they weren't able to run the football. So Luke Altmaier shown he can be dynamic both in the passing game and running game, but they got to establish Reggie Love, Josh McCray to get that physicality going and control the ball uh, so that Penn State's offense can't be on the field uh, as much as they want. So Illinois, they want to get back to Brett being on the ball and that's being the more physical team in the trenches. We forecasted this Penn State defense to be among America's elite. And through two games, it's tough to take a lot away from matchups against West Virginia and Delaware. But they looked the part, and they did it without 
really getting exotic from a defensive package look. I know Manny Diaz has a lot up his sleeve that we've yet to see here in the 2023 season. His confidence is sky high with this unit. You'll see Penn State with confidence put out 30 different defenders in this game. I'd expect to see maybe 10 defensive linemen used by the time we get to halftime. Four safeties are probably going to go 30-plus snaps. And this is a very rested defense going in uh, to their Big Ten opener. No one on this defense played more than 25 snaps last week against Delaware. The entire defense only had 42 snaps to deal with against the Blue Hens because it was so many three and outs along the way. So it should be a group that has fresh legs, and we'll find out a little bit more with some of the younger players. Sophomore denied Dennis Sutton can really wreak havoc off the edge. He's probably not going to start on Saturday, but does he take another step forward? And then we haven't seen him tested much of, uh, of late this season, but preseason All-American cornerback uh, Kalen King has a lot of fans around here. I think he could be better than Joey Porter Jr. was last year, and maybe this is an opportunity for him to make an early season splash. Okay, flip side of the ball. Penn State's got the two-headed rushing attack with Nick Singleton and Katron Allen. They combined for Penn State's first 300 rushing yard game of the season since 2019. Uh, Tyler, this Ill Illini defense hasn't held up much this year, so what do you expect from these two on game day? I think that's got to be the concentration of the Illini's defense is to focus on Nick Singleton, K. Charn Allen. We're not sure who's going to get the start. It doesn't matter. They've kind of rotated that role since they got to campus last year when they reached almost 2,000 rushing yards as freshmen. Last week, Singleton scored three touchdowns, but K. Charn Allen got the bulk of work. They wanted to showcase him a bit, show some appreciation, I think. He went for 100-plus rushing yards. And K. Charn Allen is the guy who's going to leave you with bumps and bruises on Sunday morning and wonder, what the heck happened? I, I was just about to make a tackle, and he ran right over me, whereas Nick Singleton's the blur that runs by you and you don't even get your hands on the jersey. It's been a lethal combination. We're still waiting for Singleton to get loose. He hasn't fired off one of those long runs like the 80-plus yard touchdown he had in the Rose Bowl back in January, but it's a matter of time. He's a ticking time bomb back there, and Catron Allen's the kind of enforcer who, if Penn State can establish an advantage in this game, in the second half, they can wear the Illini down to the finish line by using number 13. Yeah, we all expected regression from Illinois' defense from being the number one scoring defense in the country. They lost Devin Witherspoon, the number five pick in the draft at corner. They lost Sidney Brown and Quan Martin, two top 70 picks in the secondary. And they also lost a linebacker in Isaac Darkangelo and a defensive lineman at nose tackle in Calvin Avery, who were really important cogs of that phenomenal defense that led Illinois' resurgence. But the defense has taken a big step back. We got a new play caller at Illinois on the defensive side of the ball with Ryan Walters, now the head coach uh, at Purdue. Aaron Henry has had a rough first two games as Illinois has given up 28 points to a good Toledo team and then 34 in the first three quarters against Kansas. They have just not come out with a great game plan the last two weeks. And really, Illinois has been looking like it's kind of been doubting itself, like they're just thinking too much on defense. So I'm wondering against a top 10 opponent with nothing to lose, if Illinois just goes aggressive, they have been so uh, great defensively because they pull the trigger. They force teams to throw into man coverage with pressure in their face and, and under duress. They played two dual threat quarterbacks the last couple weeks, Quan Finn and Jalen Daniels, two really good dual threat playmakers. This week, Drew Aller, good athlete, but more of a pocket presence. I wonder if Illinois just gets more aggressive, sides on the uh, side of aggression, airs on the side of aggression, excuse me, and just tries to put pressure in his face uh, to put him behind the eight ball. And hopefully, uh, Drew Auer, who doesn't make a lot of mistakes, maybe in his first road environment as a Big Ten starter, he makes a few mistakes that lets Illinois get some confidence early in this game. Yeah, that defense definitely missing Ryan Walters. As you said, Jeremy, the defense dropping from top scoring defense in the nation down to 106. All right, we got lots of players to choose from for this next question. But the X factor, the guy who's going to make a difference, Jeremy, who do you think it's going to be? Yeah, you mentioned potential change on the offensive line, and, and Zy Chrysler is kind of a guy to watch. He's really struggled at right tackle. He was all Big Ten honorable mention last year as a guard, but he's moved out to right tackle. The problem is he didn't have a lot of reps uh, during the offseason. During spring ball, he was recovering from soldier, shoulder surgery, missed all of spring ball, and then he had an ankle injury during training camp. 
He's really struggled, giving up nine or ten pressures at right tackle during the first two games, uh, and then gave up four sacks against Kansas. Uh, so they need a better pass protector out at right tackle. Whether that's Zy Chris or I think Illinois needs to help him, whether it's more chip help, because he's going up against Chop Robinson, a first-round draft pick, potentially Adisa Isaac, and another five-star backup behind them. Uh, obviously, their linebackers are really, really good uh, pass rushers as well. But I would not be surprised, and I would actually expect Zy Christopher to potentially move back to guard and Isaiah Adams, their second team all Big Ten guard, to move out to right tackle just to give them a better look. Somebody who's more physical, somebody who's just more consistent out at right tackle. So you could see a change on the Illinois offensive line. A key focus for us here in Happy Valley all offseason was not just what, what Drew Aller looked like in the passing game, it was who he's going to be throwing the ball to. Penn State lost their top three pass targets from the 20 team. And Keandre Lambert-Smith has definitely shown up here early in the season. He's now at four consecutive games with 70-plus receiving yards. But Harrison Wallace, the redshirt sophomore, former top 24 out of the state of Alabama is really coming along in fewer than 90 total snaps in two games. He's got 10 receptions for this team. Again, a lot of that near the line of scrimmage. I want to see what happens when they start extending it downfield because he's got leap and go get it ability. Major basketball talent at the high school level. When he plays basketball here in some pickup matchups, the videos go viral. So what does that look like when he's reaching up for the football in some one-on-one -on -one situations 30 yards down the field? Maybe we get a chance to peel back the curtain a bit there. Again, 10, 10 catches on less than 90 snaps this year he had 19 catches on almost 400 snaps as a red shirt freshman so trending in the right direction and i think he's due for a big big 10 game here on saturday all right tyler donahue and jeremy werner previewing this big 10 matchup thanks for joining us guys and remember to subscribe to lions 24 7 and the illini inquire for more game coverage and all your nittany lions and illini football and recruiting coverage throughout the season <laughs>